Well, welcome everyone to Learn and Master Guitar Live. I'm so excited that you could be here with us. Uh, it's going to be a great night. Uh, we have a very special guest with us tonight, Phil Kagi, and uh, we'll talk more about Phil in just a second. But first, uh, let's get started off with a song. Phil, can you can you grab your guitar and yeah. play something for us? Thank you, Steve. It's good to be with you on it your is. on your show. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I can already tell this is going to be probably one of the best uh, live lessons we've ever done. So uh, hold on to your hats and your guitars, and uh, uh, it's going to be a great time. in there but I like seafood. <laughs> uh, tell us about that song that was uh, Wind in the Wheat? <clears throat> yeah that was uh, The Wind in the Wheat. I wrote that oh I'd say back in 1994 and recorded it uh, on an album called The Wind in the Wheat in mm -hmm. 1995. 85 I'm sorry in mm -hmm. 1984 wrote it 85 recorded it and <clears throat> you know it was very inspired by uh, the time the, the the changes I was going through uh, I, I started falling in love with acoustic even more by that time, and I still play electric, but I, I just love playing acoustic guitar. And um, uh, remember Andres Volenweider, yep. the harpist? Yep. harpist. Uh, he had an album called Ca Caverna Magica, mm -hmm. which uh, the, I loved listening to that. And, and there was a piece on there that actually inspired The Wind in the Wheat. Wow. So it uh, might even be that song itself. but. Um, but beautiful. It's nice to be able to remember, you know. <laughs> a couple of bits I work. <laughs> Those kind of lines, you know, are a little tricky sometimes. That's right. That's right. It's beautiful. Thanks. Well, we are very excited. Uh, uh, Phil Kagi is with us. We've already heard a little bit of Phil Kagi, but uh, Phil Kagi is just legendary fingerstyle guitarist, and I know I am one of uh, many that have. Uh, been inspired by this wonderful player and man, and uh, we're so honored to have you here with us. Thanks, buddy. Um, it's great to Phil, be here. it is great, great to have you here. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit, uh, guys. Let me just tell you a little bit how tonight's going to go. Um, we've got all kinds of things going on. Phil's. We're going to talk with Phil for a little bit, and then we're going to have some giveaways. We're giving away an Epiphone acoustic guitar pack tonight that we're going to get Phil to sign and autograph. Uh, so it's this guitar, and uh, there's an amp and all kinds of stuff that comes with it. And so we're giving that away, as well as uh, several of Phil's uh, CDs. So that yeah. will all be uh, coming up later on. And if you're watching us, there's many ways that you're probably watching us. If you want to be included in the giveaway, then you need to be logged into Ustream, uh, logged into our web uh, channel on Ustream. So that would be Ustream.tv, and you can log in there. And if you're logged in by 7.30, we will pick you. And um, uh, you get our free stuff and all that sort of stuff. Second half of the show, we will do uh, answer questions. So I've got several questions here that have already been posted on our discussion board, and then we'll have several more that uh, you're welcome to chat into us. So hope you guys are doing all right. It's kind of a, a dreary night here in Nashville, 
Um, but uh, it's going to be a great uh, time. I hope you're busy celebrating the Christmas season and uh, glad you're here with us tonight. And, and somebody's up really, really late in England. <laughs> That's right. What is, it, what is it, like 4 o'clock in the morning there or something? We have no, no, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, because yeah. they're, what, 7 hours ahead, I think. Is it 6? Six? 6, seven, something like that. Um, <clears throat> if some of our European folks, go ahead and type in where you're from. That's always fun to see uh, where you guys are from, uh, if you're from overseas. Uh, while they're doing that, um, Phil has done so many things over the years. Um, seven uh, GMA Dove Awards, um, 50 plus albums I read somewhere. I got, I, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> when you got a tape recorder, <laughs> um, you just use it. That's all. <laughs> um, nominated for uh, two Grammys for uh, Best uh, Rock uh, Instrumental and uh, more musical accomplishments than. Uh, than uh, is allowed by then law. my sister has. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Phil, how'd you get started playing? Well, I started playing uh, around the age of 10. Mm -hmm. um, I was taking my good old time. I had a silver tone acoustic guitar my dad got me for my 10th birthday. And I was actually hoping to be a drummer. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of a drummer too. Musical family? Yeah, sort of, a little bit. My oldest sister sang. Mm -hmm. Big band, and mm -hmm. she became an actress. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, next time you see the Ten Commandments, be sure you watch for her because she's <laughs> in there. She's the one that says, "Be sure it's not a crocodile." When they found the baby Moses. In That's it. right. That's right. <clears throat> That's my sister, and uh, she also led me to uh, a personal yeah. faith too. Yeah. Uh, that, and uh, so I love her. She sang. My brother Dave played as a hobby guitar, mm -hmm. but he uh, he had um, an old Gibson, I think. Yay, Gibson. Mm -hmm. And um, you're one of nine I'm children. One of ten. One of ten. I'm I'm number nine. Number okay. nine. <laughs> That's me. I'm the ninth of ten, and uh, and I have nine fingers to prove. <laughs> so um, I know folks yeah. are already wondering. So go ahead and give us the quick story. Of, the quick story of how your I, finger. Yeah. Oh my 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 finger. <clears throat> I lived on a farm as a little kid, mm -hmm. and um, till I was about six years old. And when I was about four or five years old, I went down to get some water from a water pump that mm -hmm. cranks like that. And, uh, and climbing up on it, just sort of like this, you see. Mm -hmm. And the wood was rotting, and, yeah. the, and the whole thing went through it. Oh. And, and the spigot caught my, my hand. Mm -hmm. And I remember it like it was yesterday, my dad coming down to rescue me. Yeah. I was in shock, you know, and crying. And he came down and held me close to him. I remember the shirt he was wearing. Wow. I'm telling you, this is like what, 55 years ago? Amazing. And uh, I remember the ride to the hospital, mm -hmm. him holding me, my sister driving, and mm -hmm. um, they put a big bandage on. I remember the ether coming down on my face. Mm -hmm. they, they used stuff like ether, mm -hmm. stuff they worked on cars with, you know. <laughs> put me out. And, um, uh, and that's on your mm -hmm. uh, picking hand. It is. How have you been able to compensate for that? Um, I get Actually, trying to tune while you were talking. Let me tune real quick here. <laughs> well, well, God gave us ten to begin with, in case we lose one along the way. <laughs> now, do you use your pinky for picking, or is it you're mainly using thumb one and three? I do. Thumb I do. Three. Okay. I, I, I'm really not a I'm not a classical player. Yeah. I'm, I've kind of like developed within my capabilities, you know, mm -hmm. with these fingers that I have. And uh, I, I use a plectrum, a pick sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can also use the nail that I, I grow out on this finger, that <coughs> finger, and the thumb. Now, I don't know if you can, you can't quite see the angle that I can see, but his nails are actually pretty, pretty long. Um, That's because I forgot to file them down this week. I get working on other things and I figure, ooh, ooh, they're long. Now, real nails? Do you use fake nails or...? They're real nails, but they're coated with a little acrylic. Keeps them nice and firm. Yeah, Keeps you them go to from the... breaking when I do the dishes. Somebody the does that out. for you? <laughs> What's that? Somebody does that for you? You go to a place to have an mm -hmm. acrylic put on? Yeah, mm -hmm, I yeah. do. Because yeah. I don't think I could do a very good job. <laughs> 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 I don't think my wife Bernadette would want me messing around with that stuff around the house, you know. 
unless it smells. But I, um, I, I, I've adapted. I, I started playing acoustic seriously. Um, I was playing a lot of electric guitar through 1964, 65, 66, 67. Then I started getting an acoustic a little bit, and by 1970, mm -hmm. I was definitely more into the acoustic, and I started writing songs and vocal songs with my acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. Had a classical for a while, mm -hmm. an Alvarez classical. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were learning, how did you um, how did you learn how to play? Did you have a Did you have a teacher? Did you have a somebody that was an influence in your life in those early years? Yeah, my my first influence was my brother Dave, who I love and I owe so much to him. Uh, he got me my first electric guitar when I was in the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And before the year was out, I was playing in front of my classroom with another little guy who mm -hmm. played the drums. And, and we were just, you know, rocking out, two little guys in fifth grade. And so this was a year <clears throat> after you started playing, because you were playing yeah. when, you started, when you were 10. Yep. Yep. So uh, I, I got into it really fast. And I started listening, I've been listening to um, people like Dick Dale and the Safaris and the Beach Boys. I was always listening to Elvis, you know, in those mm -hmm. days in the 50s. Scotty Moore Scotty is Moore. a hero of mine, guitar hero, uh, James Burton. Yeah. Um, and then it went into the surf thing, and at that time, our family, who were from Ohio, we went to California because my dad liked working out in California in, in the, the nice weather mm -hmm. as an iron worker. So um, that's was that was the scene out there until the Beatles came out, you know, and the Beatles came out and... And that just took me to another level of interest, because all those great songs That's and the, right. the tones on the, the tones on those uh, those guitars and through those voxes were great. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, so when you were just hammering out your ability, it was mainly you just being creative on your guitar with the influences of these musicians in your life. It wasn't like you were taking lessons from somebody or anything like that. Along well, my brother started me off with some chord charts, and I never did take any official lessons. Mm -hmm. I think I, I did go once, and the guy showed me how to hold a pick. Mm -hmm. And um, But really where I learned a lot was I listened to records. I had ears that were really into my records, my 45 RPMs and my 33 RPMs, and I would, I would slow solos down, you know, mm -hmm. from... 45 to 33, or 33 to 16, and learn the <laughs> solos that way. Yeah. Also, I had some really good friends, you know, as, and that's the whole thing, you know, meeting up with other yeah. fellow musicians, and no matter what age or what stage you're at and you're playing, uh, Renee McRae out in California, mm -hmm. he was my first guitar buddy, mm -hmm. uh, Sam Crumweed, mm -hmm. we were in the fir our first band together. I remember their names, and I'm grateful for these guys, because uh, we'd get excited, we'd be We'd be next to each other like, like this, you know? <laughs> you know. Yeah, show me that, show me that, you know. And learning licks, um, and um, and my friend Mike Pacelli's here, by the way, a fine, accomplished guitarist and producer. And we used to do that too back in high school days. So we used to jam with each other, we learn from each other, play along with records. Uh, I got into tape recorders at a very young age too, which yeah. is why I'm. I'm into looping as I do, you know. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the live yeah. from Kegworth yeah. album, which is a live album without anybody around, an audience of one, <laughs> except that. And, yes. Um, and uh, and I do I do that in concert. So as a soloist, you know, I, I, I sometimes tell my audience it's fun to it's fun to do this all because you know after all I am handicapped. <laughs> so. <laughs> But I've got a lot of, I've developed a bit of technique over the years, yep. you know. I, I always like to think that uh, we all do our part. We all say something. We all that's have right. a voice. We all have a, a signature, a personality, a soul. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what makes us all unique. And uh, I'm glad for all the other guitarists who have influenced me. And not only guitarists, but other musicians who play other instruments, you that's know. That's right. Now, I know you were doing just a little bit of slapping stuff there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Show show us that technique and maybe give give the folks a, an idea of what's involved with that and what you're actually doing. Okay, uh, well there are, there are players first of all I must say who are all over the neck. They can right. tap. They can do everything. I'm a pretty basic mm -hmm. tapper. You know I can mm -hmm. do. I think one of the things about my style is I got this rocking thing that mm -hmm. I do with the palm of my hand right there. I'm not I'm not just tapping the fret, but mm -hmm. I'm also creating a bit of a beat on the guitar, you right. know. 
and you're hitting about an octave above the chorus so you can get some harmonics in there. Yeah. <laughs> and all that jazz. Yeah, I, lo I love Beautiful. to do the tapping thing. You know, they're, uh, you know, of course the nails are a bit long, but, um, See, um, but they're too long, so I'm not getting yeah, all the flush. Yeah. yeah, I gotta, I gotta do some trimming there. Uh, guys, that's in a drop D tuning that he just did there, and he's got a capo. I don't know whether you can see it clear enough. The capo's on the second fret. <clears throat> yeah, um, and uh, do you want another example of yeah. uh, something I like to do in concert? Sure. With the drop D. Okay. Okay. But I'll take this uh, this shove capo, and I'll shove it right here on my guitar. <laughs> and I'll put it right here. So... So that's the fifth fret, if you can see that. And he's got it upside down, so the sixth string is not covered with the, uh, yeah. the capo. <clears throat> then I take this other capo that I've got, an, I've got it notched. And um, uh, where'd that guy go? He's here somewhere. Maybe it's this one. Maybe. Actually, it's not. Uh, must be, uh, I was going to do shades of green, but it's, um, must be, maybe it's still in here. Yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> I found it. <clears throat> That's good news for modern man. Here this, we is go. A, this is a, a Kaiser capo. Yeah. And now, did you cut it out? or? Yeah, did I did. I did. I, you know, I, I cut it out. So it is, it is going to be I cut got, out on which strings? Well, I've got it cut out for the D string and the B string. Okay. But for this particular song, I'll put it right up to the seventh fret, up to the D string. Okay. So what we're ending up ending up with is. And so you got the open E all the way down to, to the nut. Mm -hmm. The A string is going to. But this is a, an E or a D? Oh, it's down to. So it's D. Yeah. D. Yeah. Okay. E string. Yeah. So I have this piece I like to do called Shades of Green. Yep. And I'll put a little bit extra verb on, create this beginning.
sorry. I noticed that uh, it was starting to come off the fretboard there. But uh, capos are fun. You can do little notches like that. Beautiful. I got, I got these other Kaiser capos I wanted to show you. And uh, this one here, you've got a red one and a white one. And I put them on like this. I put this one right up here. They're different. One's uh, notched um, where the E string is free, open. And then this one presses down when you hit the lever, just the E string. Mm -hmm. And this one presses down the A and the E string. Wow. Okay, I got it. My friend Greg O'Haver uh, from and uh, Randall over there at the Shub, I mean the, uh, sorry Shub, uh, the Kaiser guys, they're all great, you know. <laughs> it all contributes to the music. It, yes. That's what's important, isn't it? So. get with your guitar, you get with these little things and you make up stuff and that's fun. It's fun to do. Um, everyone, we will try and get some pictures of, uh, we've already put up some pictures of Phil's gear. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll have one of our guys put up that link again. And before uh, Phil goes, we'll try and, try and take a picture of these capos so you can get an idea of these different capos and uh, we'll put them up on a discussion board or something like that. Um, while we're talking about gear, kind of run us through what you're what you're playing through, what kind of looper you're doing, okay, and uh, what kind of effects you're running through down there. Well, I've got ancient gear here. You know, I've got <laughs> Chet Atkins turned me on to his Jam Man when he first got a Jam Man in I think around '93, '4, mm -hmm. something around that time. Yeah. And uh, so I got one, and I still have it. That's a Lexicon Jam Man. Yeah, I don't know if they make it anymore, but yeah. but Roland Boss makes great loopers. Yeah. Uh, what what other kind of loopers are there? Uh, boomerang and yeah, I've seen boomerang. I've got a Line Six here, DL4, uh, and it and it it can go 14 or 28 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, Look, ma, no hands. You know? <laughs> and looping is cool because it helps you get in in time with yourself. Yeah, you know, you, it, it's it's actually good because. I, I, I know notice that I'm more time conscious, or I feel time a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, musicians have a tendency, and guitar players especially, to to, to speed up, you yeah. know, when you play. Yeah. But but you can use this. The neat thing about uh, that, and you can reverse it. I've 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 written songs because of riffs that go the other direction. You know, as far back I've as I've heard 19... of some of your some yeah. of your stuff, yeah. Yeah, in fact, there was a song I wrote in 1967 called "All My Wishes," that went um, it went like this. Um... Right, remember that one? Mm -hmm. And then I reverse it, and it and became, you know. like the sound of backwards stuff <laughs> and it's not evil it's just, it's just backwards you know, that's, that's true all. um uh, what else do i got going here i got an octaver regular old boss octaver uh, oc2 i like the old one better yeah uh, than, than the other one but see like i'll put a loop in um for instance take for instance the um a little jam i did on my roundabout cd which was just a, a fun cd of mm -hmm. sound check jams mm -hmm. uh, 
where I went, um, whoops. Well, before I do that, let me tell you, this is also a MIDI wizard that I got hooked up in here that, that, that uh, interfaces with the, the, jam, jam the Jam Man. And then I've got a reverb uh, thing right up here, made by Lexicon, Lexicon as well. I've got a, um, the old Boss Dimension C mm -hmm. that I got. Boy, I haven't even gift. seen that. That's a yeah, DC Dennis Akajanian gave it to me years and years ago. He said, don't lose it. <laughs> so it's been, it's been yeah, you know, there on my pedal board now for quite a while. Um, I've got an old tremolo. I love the tremolo. Yeah. And then I've got like, you know, a swell pedal for, for a sustain. And I've got another one um, called a uh, tone, tone Freak FX. Actually, that, those things are primarily, every once in a while, I'll throw yeah. in a little overdrive, but nothing too heavy, you know? Yeah. This, this also doubles for my electric guitar pedal board. Yeah. And so it's pretty cool that I could use a lot of the same stuff for electric, just kick it into the amp instead of the house. Yeah. But this is another little uh, demonstration of looping. jamming all, all day long with it you know the only thing is you got to be careful it, it, it can get boring and so you don't want to live there too yeah. long you know yeah. and uh, and so actually my favorite times have been with no nothing plugged in yeah. just sitting with a guitar and coming up with like alternate tunings or something right. some melodies and That's right. which which is what I love to do the most but I, I do that because it's kind of like has elements of it, a little bit of excitement and build up and crescendo into mm -hmm. something. 
Um, but like Tommy Emmanuel never has to use any of that <laughs> stuff. Well, that's all right. That's all right. It's, it's fun to do, and you know I love I love multi-tracking, so yeah. that's why it's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, before we get too uh, caught up in other things, um, we were doing some looping things, and uh, we've got some CDs to give away. So um, the first CD we're going to give away, it is about that time, um, is a CD that Phil did uh, recently, was the Welcome In, right? A couple the years Christmas. ago. Mm -hmm. um, um, tell us about this project a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay, be happy to. Uh, this is a, a Christmas album that I did. I had done a, an instrumental Christmas album years ago. Majesty and Wonder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I have, and it's fabulous mm -hmm. if you can find it these days. That's true. They are, they are hard to find. But uh, I did this one, and I thought, well, I already did an instrumental one. I'd like to do one where I prim primarily sing on it. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a few songs, like um, uh, Best Christmas Morn and Welcome In and <clears throat> Village Bells and Father and... Um, had a song called And On That Day I'd written with my friend John Safara. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Shades of Green, like that thing, mm -hmm. but I added some Christmas little mm -hmm. vignettes in it, you know, little carols in there. Um, there's a tune on here called For, uh, for the Twelfth uh, Night that uh, is, the lyrics are by uh, Walter Wangren, Jr., who mm -hmm. wrote many books. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's got my daughter and my son singing on here with me, and also Nina Landis. We do a duet called Let Us Go to Bethlehem. I'm really happy with this album. Wow. It's kind of, it's very personal and intimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there are a couple instrumentals on it, but mostly it's a, and it's Tis the Season. That's so right. I hope everybody who gets a copy of this enjoys it. Um, um, let me first mention, we, we're going to give away three of these, okay? Uh, three of these, and Phil's going to autograph these before these go. This is the welcome, and this is the Christmas project. Now, <coughs> sorry, um, these uh, these CDs and these we're going to talk about a bunch of resources, and those are all available at Phil's website, which is philkagi.com. Fabian, maybe you can put up that link for us. Um, and these items are also in his store as well. So he's got a store on the website, and so you can get these things as well and order them, and, and he'll send them out to you. Anyway, but we're going to give away three of these. Are you ready? We're going to start out with our three winners for the Welcome In, and we're going to get these autographed, are, wow, a water cinnam? <laughs> I don't, I'll, let me just spell it. A water cinnam. A-W-A-T-T-E-R-S-I-N-N-M. You have won one. Jello Man Kent. Uh, Kent, you won one. And Skibu, S-K-I-B-O-U. Uh, Y'all three have won uh, the Welcome In Project. What you need to do is uh, you can email us, email our office uh, tonight at, uh, or tomorrow at service at LegacyLearningSystems.com. If you can, uh, maybe you'll, Fabian, you can put up that link for us. Service at LegacyLearningSystems.com. That's cool. Um, then uh, send us your information. <clears throat> so we need your address. Um, give us your phone number, email address, everything that we would need to be able to contact you and get you these out. So we're going to so we go, three, three of you guys just won that. That's great. Uh, a Water Cinem, jell man oh. Kent, and Skiboo. You just won. jell man Kent. <laughs> cool names. Hey, we have got, uh. but that's not all. This is a special Christmas edition, so we are in a giving mood. And uh, we're going to give away five of uh, Phil's, let me get that from you, Phil's uh, CD, Live from Kegworth Studio, which features a lot of the looping songs that Phil has uh, been doing live. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this yeah, one? Yeah, this album, uh, the reason why this album came about is um, a lot of my old songs are out of print or they're not available in a CD right now presently. And then uh, there'd be a song from that CD and that song and oftentimes people would come up to the CD table, you know, mm -hmm. and say, what can I take home that sounds like what you did tonight? And uh, with, uh, mm. You got me on that one. I'm stumped. So with my wife's encouragement and some friends, <laughs> I went down in my studio and I just started putting down songs over yeah. a week and week's time in August, this past August. Songs that I like to do and thought, tunes that came to my mind, you know, some ballads as well as some rockers. Mm -hmm. Salvation Army Band, True Believers, um, What a Day, Your Love Broke Through Chalice, Let Everything Else Go. Um, a Sign Came Through the Window and... Uh, uh, Shades of Green and Legacy. 
Uh, and I put them all on this one. My friend Mike Bocelli here, who's here, maybe you could put the camera on Mike at some point. Uh, <laughs> He, uh, he mixed it and mastered it for me. Oh, fantastic. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And it sounds really good. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm very pleased. I've always wanted to do an acoustic live album, but it, it just never was set up to be um, sonically the yeah. way I'd like it to yeah. be. So this was one way. I just went right into Pro Tools, my guitar track and my vocal track, and that's it. Wow. And there were no uh, punch-ins on, on the electric, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the uh, acoustic, on the guitar. Mm -hmm. I would uh, I would just do sections maybe I would do an ending a second time and then mm -hmm. edit it together and so it mm -hmm. so it, it came out the way I wanted it to fantastic um, hope everybody enjoys it who gets it uh, this is a, a CD called live from Kegworth studio and five of you folks are gonna win it and those winners are you ready work in progress nice name uh, uh, why oh. woods which why is w-i-w-o-o-d-s why woods uh, Yakina, uh, Y A Q U I N A, and Swan K. <laughs> wow, what crazy names! S U A N K K. You have won one, and the last one is Jones P R. So the five winners of these <laughs> CDs are Work in Progress, Y Woods, Yakina, Swan K K. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't sound like any, anybody from Tennessee is. <laughs> Is and logged in. Jones PR. So you guys have won five of these. We'll get Phil to autograph those as well. Yeah, I will be glad to. So um, and glad to meet you all. Um, we have one more um, thing to give away. Uh, it's Christmas. We're going crazy here. Um, we're going to give away the uh, Epiphone Acoustic Guitar Pack, which is the. Let me kind of set my guitar down. Um, which is actually this guitar. Phil, if you want to maybe pl okay. strum a little bit on that. Yeah. Um, that is the Epiphone uh, acoustic guitar, and uh, <coughs> and Phil's going to uh, autograph that. And it comes with an amp and all kinds of things like that as well. well I get. I... Wow, that's interesting. So where do you? Oh, there you do. You plug it right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. And. Uh... Ooh. <laughs> so, the winner of the acoustic guitar um, is, you ready? Westfold. Westfold, which, Wes, you are one of our main dis uh, discussion board folks. Westfold, you won yourself this guitar. We'll have Phil sign it if you want Phil to sign it. So uh, uh, maybe you can uh, chat us back and yeah. let us know if you want that signed or, or not. Or I could sign it back here. There's plenty of room back here. and That way you don't have to deface the front of it. <laughs> So, uh, Westfall, congratulations. All right, that's enough of all that craziness. Um, wow, that doesn't sound half bad. Sounds good. How about that? One of the questions we had um, was about an, an old song that Phil did many years ago called Be In My Heart. Uh, Stealth from Sheffield, UK was asking about that. He was asking if he could play a little bit of it, and that's what that is. Okay, I'll play a little bit of it. <clears throat> John Perry.
Perry wrote that, and he's from England. Yeah, well, there yeah. you go. There so, you go. hey, <laughs> where have you been, John? Haven't heard from you in a long time. I always love that song. Um, let's do, um, let me talk a, a little bit about um, some of the things on Phil's website, because I wanted to get to that. He does have a lot of great things at that, uh, in his store. There are a lot of things that you can't get. So many, um, so many things that Phil has done you can't get anymore. Um, uh, so songs like, or books like my book that I have here, which is an old book. Uh, mm -hmm. Mel Bay put this out way back when. Uh, Acoustic Solos, my well-worn copy of Acoustic Solos. Um, I saw on eBay or Amazon just today, new copies of this were being going for over a hundred dollars. So they just what? don't have these anymore. That's highway robbery. <laughs> and I can't even read it. I can't read a note. Are you serious? Serious. Really? Yeah, I've got a friend who wants to teach me. In fact, uh, my friend Adam Cord, who I put mm -hmm. you in touch with, yeah. <clears throat> he's making a new uh, songbook of some pieces from acoustic sketches and mm -hmm. uh, other places, Kate Cajon Pass and uh, various songs and he's very very good and he's very articulate and he he really gets it right and uh, uh, So something new may be coming out in the future um, so. Phil also does have a, a song with best of Phil Kagi that is on his website Fabian Maybe you can put up that link for it um, Really what is that? Oh, it's the Hal Leonard book. That's the Hal Leonard book. And hey Hal <laughs> Thanks a lot for putting my book out <laughs> And there's there was two versions I saw on your website one of them was just the book and the other one was a book in the CD Oh yeah, that had that. And I think you're supposed to autograph those or something. Yeah, yeah, I would be okay. glad to. Okay, yeah. so it's nice to have the music that goes with. The, yeah, that's what I always thought. You know. uh, that would have been helpful. On that some would of make it more useful to me. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. So um, anyway, so that book is there as well. So he's got a lot of good things. And let me tell you about two other ones. These are old, old, old things. Um, but when I was, I lived in Round Rock, mm -hmm. Texas. Oh gosh, 15 years ago, and it was a Halloween night. And everybody was going out trick-or-treating, and I didn't want to do that. And uh, I sat back in one of our guys' living rooms, and I watched Phil Kagey's Acoustic Guitar Style Instructional DVD, which oh, is man. still on uh, your website. So I guess yeah, there's still a few around. I'm 21 years younger there, <laughs> you know, so, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice. It was 1990, I believe I was doing that. That was a, a while back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so he's got one for acoustic, which is great, and then I've also seen the electric one too, electric guitar style. Two DVDs, you can get them, Fabian's got the links, they're at Phil's website, and I think they're just like 30 bucks or something like that. Let me encourage you to get those, those are great, that was very helpful and informative, and uh, it's great, great stuff. So I learned a lot personally from those uh, DVDs. So should we do a lick and do it really slow? Yes. Okay. Teach the guy something. Okay. I th oh, I, I'm, I'm always learning, so. Let's see, so here's an idea. Watch this. Uh. So, then I can play it. So it just lowers in an octave. So like for instance, if you know a lick that I don't know, mm -hmm. yeah, you put it in there, you know, like one of these, like and then play it half speed. Oh. <laughs> that that make, that takes it too fast. So you gotta shut that off. Or um uh, Show us what you did there. Oh, oh okay. What did I do? It's basically running down just a, a, a minor or a C major pentonic first form. Hey, here, here's a fun lick. Uh, those kind of licks, I like mm -hmm. those kind of things. So you so like you're, you're actually an A minor, but you're playing a riff off of D minor. Yeah. Then you just open, you end it with that open E string. Take us through a super slow. D, E, F there. Is 
because I try to hold on to notes that are yeah, ringing preceding. That's it. the things that Smith. Oh, yeah. You yeah. remember Hadley? I remember him from Coin and Eel. What's he, what is he doing these days? He's been playing for <clears throat> Neil Diamond for the last uh, 30 years, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw so he's my, still I, playing with Neil Diamond. Yeah, I, knew he was yeah. With I just saw him on TV playing with Neil Diamond. But I remember one day he showed me this is this is good for stretching out the, the fingers um, by going the E major 7 up there. Mm -hmm. And then bring that down. Have you ever done this, Mike? down the neck, it's stretching your fingers even more. By the right. time you get down here, yeah. yow. Yeah. <laughs> so I will try and write that out uh, tomorrow, the next day, uh, so you guys can have that on the website. You want to see another good stretch? Yeah. This is from the wind in the week. It's right. called the mission. It's like it's like the only part of my body that knows how to do, do yoga <laughs> is my my hand, my left hand. Um, that's it. Uh, many of you struggle with uh, stretching things just like that, and you say, "Gosh, my hand is just too small. There's no way I could stretch that." Phil Kagi must have large, inhuman hands. With let's see, and they're not. I actually probably have. Hands by maybe yeah. just a little bit, or we're about the same size. Same size. About the same size. Yeah. So now I have no excuse. I should be able to play exactly like Phil. Um, let me also ask if it's not too personal. How old are you? I'm 60. He is. And a half. <laughs> right. Many of you, many of uh, many of you on the discussion board think, "Gosh, I can't learn guitar because I'm just too old. I, there's no way I can do it because I'm just too old." And that is just not true. I work with adult learners all the time. And uh, it's all about progressing, a little bit each day, getting you further down the road. I'm still learning things, Steve, yeah. and I'm grateful, you know, for that. Uh, and I think it's good. I think it's good to keep creative. It's good for the, the brain, yeah. the mind, and it's good for the heart, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, especially when you know that you're trying to bring some joy and happiness into this world That's right. for others with music. Uh, and you're still very active playing. So you mm -hmm. have like about how many gigs you do a year? Well, not as many as I used to, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, old timers, you know, aren't as popular as <laughs> young timers. But uh, I, 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 I do about three, four concerts a month, hopefully. Yeah. And if I'm not, I'm in the studio putting tracks down for others. You know, I, I like to do sessions. Yeah. And, I, and I'll, I'll play for anybody's music. You know? Wow. Uh, I send files off, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't think I'd ever get into computer-based recording, but about eight years ago I started getting into it, and and I, I, I like it. I think I've gotten fairly good at it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, we had several questions from guys um, on the discussion board, so let me ask you a few of those, and then we'll take a few of the ones from the chat. How are we doing on time? Oh my goodness, we are never going to get through any of these. Um, 
Um, do you have any control over the publishers uh, releasing your old stuff? Probably you have zero control over that. Are we ever going to see a wind in the weed come out again? Not unless I do it. You know, I, I, I have that master. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of getting down and doing it. Yeah. But there are albums that, um, that I don't own, mm -hmm. the record companies, and they're out of print, and they don't seem too interested. Yeah. Unless I kick the bucket, then they might be interested. <laughs> That's a light way of saying die. You know, but, uh, <laughs> you know I, I, th I think what happens is uh, they just hang on to this stuff because they call them assets. Yeah. You know? That's the, true. The wind and the weed. I would, while we're talking about the wind and the weed, that was a project that... Uh, was one of the pivotal projects as I was kind of growing up learning how to play guitar was listening to The Wind and the Wheat. So if you can find a copy of The Wind and the Wheat, they're pretty pricey these days. I, I had checked those as well and I thought, ah, oh, I'll just get the CD. I didn't find anything on eBay and it was like, I don't know, 50 bucks for a CD of it now. So I also like the Beyond Nature. And Beyond Nature as well uh, is another one of the instruments. I don't know if that one, I know you can get it on iTunes, Beyond Nature and one. Mm -hmm. Can you get Wind in the Weed on iTunes? I tried. To, I couldn't get it, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. That's that was a great. nice album. That was. Good musicians on there, too. <laughs> you know, there was uh, uh, Ron, uh, Ron Hutt, um, the drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, like, who played on March of the Clouds? Sorry, you uh, don't mind if we just sit here and talk for a second. Yeah, uh, that was uh, Alex Cunha on drums and percussion. Yeah. There was Jeff Lambs and uh, uh, Dave Coy. Yeah, I did the guitars and um, oh, this is fan fantastic. Just, Ron, um, but there were other musicians on the album. There was Harlan Rogers was on it. Yeah, and um, nice beautiful, players. Beautiful stuff. Uh, that song we were just talking about, "March of the Clouds," that was one of the videos that I put up on the discussion board. Uh, the one with the electric. So uh, Dave Spur played on there too. On a, okay. On a, the song that goes like this. Beautiful. Um, let's see. Um, Revster from Ontario is asking, with the creativity that Phil has, I was wondering what he thinks or sees as he is playing when you're when you're playing. Uh, one of the guys that was at our uh, guitar gathering this year, you were at here two years ago. One of the players that we had here this year was the great Martin Taylor. Oh yeah, he's great. And he great was talking a little bit about the creative process and what he's kind of seeing or visualizing, thinking while he's playing. Um, what do you, what do you see when you're playing? I, I, I when I'm playing something that uh, I'm familiar with, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the fretboard sometimes. Then I just close my eyes and get lost in the moment. You yeah. know, there are times when I can play without looking at what I'm playing, mm -hmm. because it, it's just so you know you, you feel it. You know, mm -hmm. you you feel in touch with it, with the notes and with the emotion of the notes. Other times where I'm really focusing on placement and yeah. In articulation and mm -hmm. definition. The greatest moments are, like I said earlier, before we were uh, on the program, is that when you uh, lose uh, self-consciousness and yeah. you quit thinking about, oh, am I going to make it? Am I going to be able to accomplish this or play it? Mm -hmm. And you begin to relax and you begin to become one with your instrument and, and you re recognize that it's a gift. Yeah. And... Um, Music is such a gift. Uh, there are times when I've listened to my recordings and others, re other recordings, and I'm am I'm amazed at just the gift of music and how notes work together and uh, how they speak together. And yeah. you know, like for instance, these two notes clash. You know, mm -hmm. like um, some minor second there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you hear that all day, but if you hear it in the context of four other strings with us, you know. It's like, oh, there's fellowship, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like uh, music to me is uh, almost symbolic of relationships in our lives, you yeah. know? People that we know, there are people that don't quite get along, but you, you bring an element of other people who are peacemakers, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, uh, there's harmony. Yeah. So it's a good thing. It's beautiful. And it's all because of the goodness of God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, talk to, uh, Steve-O was asking, uh, warm-up exercises. 
you do anything to well, you saw, showed us the one stretching exercise. Anything else you do that particularly would find helpful for these guys? If if I uh, if I feel like uh, exercising my fingers, I think one of the things I like to do, you know, mm -hmm. do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because when I started out playing guitar, I didn't use my pinky a lot. Mm -hmm. Now it's a, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I think um, work on inversions, you know. Yeah. Find all the places you can, you know, all the different places you can play the F chord, the C yeah. chord. Um, but, and I think uh, just practice it being definite and defined on your notes, you know. And um, um, the left hand has always been a little brighter than my right hand, and but I find ways to work around that and make the two hands work together, you know. But uh, I don't have scale things that yeah. I do. Um, now, what was that? Slow that down about 20 times and... Um. Here, I'll, I'll do it this way. <laughs> that's a, it looks like that's a little lick. I, I teach a concept at around session 17 or so, about three notes on a string scales. It's playing, uh, playing within a key, but you're playing basically three notes on a string. And yeah. you're doing whatever you... And you're somehow you're spinning out of it. Yeah, look at you go. Some, and then somewhere in here you switch. Yeah. <laughs> you just do that and here's it slow. <laughs> We didn't talk about alternate tunings. I, I've got yeah, a, a, a whole talk bunch for a of those. second about alternate tunings in our last. Oh gosh, we're already out of time. We are. That's all right. That's all right. Tell us just a little bit about alternate tunings for a second, well, and then we'll wrap it up. Everybody, a lot of people, guitar players know Dad Gad. Mm -hmm. You know those. Are, but there are other ones you can explore and find your own, your own kind of, uh, uh, your own thing. Like uh, here. Uh, on Beyond Nature, there are several yeah. songs with different alternate tunings in different places. Mm -hmm. Jack, Brother Jack is one of them, the E7. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, what you might do is, if you have a musical mind, uh, you'll hear things, oh, that position is nice. You know, you'll hear these. <laughs> you'll try familiar uh, formations. Yeah. And you go, ooh. That's yeah. a diminished chord, so. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> there, there's your E position, Beautiful. like there. So uh, it's fun to mess with, around with uh, alternate tunings because you'll discover more about the guitar that way. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we're done, aren't we? We're we are definitely hitting the home stretch. I'll let you get ready for your next. Uh, but Phil's going to play one more before we close it out. Um, I have a couple of last-minute announcements I wanted to let you guys know. If uh, many of you are familiar with the guitar course that this whole broadcast is around, which is a, a guitar instructional course that I did, uh, gosh, probably five years ago now, called uh, Le Gibson's Learn and Master Guitar. And uh, that is a guitar course. I believe there's, there's, we can throw up links to that as well. That takes you step-by-step step from here's a guitar. It's got six strings. 
all the way through some fairly advanced playing, but it gives you a path. So many folks have been able to learn how to play with that, and we won the Acoustic Guitar Magazine's Player's Choice Award for Best Instructional Material this year. So uh, if you're interested in learning how to play guitar or someone that you know, then uh, check it out. Uh, also, I did a, a, a course a couple of months ago, Song Hits, where I'll take, uh, um, I'll take uh, songs that you would know, and uh, we put them along with the various skill levels in the course. So if you're in session four, instead of playing something, you know, something simple or something unfamiliar, you're able to play a song that you'd hear off the radio. So um, check out the Song Hits course. We've got a special going on that now, and I believe that link is, uh, Fabian can put up that link as well. Also, we've been providing educational content for uh, Gibson.com uh, called Gibson Skills House. We do a lot of the tip videos and song lessons and all that sort of stuff. So on Skills House this week, what do we have? I put up a lesson about major seventh chords and uh, doing different uh, grooves with major seventh chords. And we also have a new song that another one of the instructors has put up, Black Magic Woman, the Santana version of that. So anyway, that's, that's new this week on Gibson Skills House. Our newsletter, so many things, our newsletter came out this morning, so if you did not find that in your email box, uh, you can go to our discussion board, and there's a newsletter link, and, uh, or Fabian, I think you probably have our newsletter link as well. You can do that and uh, refer to that. Um, let's see, one last thing. We also have a guitar uh, apprentice, which is a guitar learning um, um, game that has uh, some of the other folks in the company have developed. And we've got a special running on that now as well, where you can get four of those DVDs as well. Anyway, that Fabian's got that link too. All right, enough of all that craziness. Um, it's been Phil. Thank you so much for being part of it. It has been welcome, great, and, great, and, so and, uh, great having you here. Thank you for what you're doing, encouraging musicians, guitar players, yes. to uh, to keep pursuing their no. gifts. You know, we're all we're all on the path. Some of us are just starting on the road. Some of us are further along the road, but we're all learning. I'm learning. Phil's learning. You're learning, mm -hmm. and it's all about going into your uh, practice room, working on things you don't know. Um, experimenting with different things. Some of the best ideas are just letting your mind wander on your instrument a little bit. And uh, so I just encourage you, you're doing great work. Becoming a musician is a wonderful thing. It's well worth the effort. So, um, Phil, why don't you play us out with something? Okay. with us. Uh, next live lesson we'll have is December 27th. We'll do some New Year stuff. You guys have a great Christmas, great holiday season. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. You bet. Good night.